You mean they're foreigners too? Five p pieces. They're not foreign. I suppose they might have given me them on the bus, but have I you got can't. Got a ten p? A ten p? Well, I haven't looked here, but I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, I've got to drop it. I am so sorry. Oh, th thank you very much. Oh, my bus ticket. I mustn't lose that. Keep it. There's ten p. I'm ever so sorry to keep putting it in there. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Well, I don't want Next. that now, dear. Thank you very much indeed. I've got everything. <laughs> Yes. You specifically said dry, Dora. It's on my list. Dry, sweet, what's the difference? Come in. A trifle is a trifle is a trifle. Well, bung some brandy into it. Nobody will know the di All right, all right, I'll pick some up. Some cream? Yes. What? Well, later rather than sooner, I'm afraid, Dora. Yeah. But Christmas playing out good cheer. Christmas comes but once a year. And you spend the rest of the time paying off the credit cards. Not me, sir. Credit cards, sir. I never use them. Well, what about those impulsive little luxuries that suddenly catch your fancy? Sir? You don't mean to say that you don't succumb like the rest of us? Never, sir. If I want something, I save for it. Yes. Quite. Sergeant Willoughby says, can you come through, sir? There's a girl coming, says someone's taken her baby. Well, it sounds to me as if someone's just found it. Well, that's it, sir. Someone stole her baby and left another one in its place. Just keeps saying it's not hers. Keeps on repeating it. What's your name? Uh, Bond, Mrs. What's her particulars? She says her husband's a garage mechanic at some of his neighbors. I better get word to him. Uh, or oh, I better get a doctor. Or a good psychiatrist. <laughs> get a pair of lungs. I want it taken away. Shall we talk first? I don't want it near me. Thank you. I suppose you think I'm some kind of nutter too. Any reason why I should? You have children. Is it important? Yeah. Two girls. At your age. That's not my baby. I didn't notice at first, until it started crying. Then I knew. Where were you? In the high street, shopping. There was this queue. Where? That big news agent, opposite Woolworths. I only left her a minute, less than a minute. There were plenty of people around. I thought that... You thought it'd be all right? Yes. Yes. When was this? A few minutes ago. 20 minutes ago. I came straight here. And any other children? What's your baby's name? Karen. Karen April Bond. Age? Three months and two days. Colour of hair? Red. Same as the baby you brought in, then? Yeah. I 
child benefit book with her name, Karen April Brown. Dear Pippa, from my mother-in-law, looking forward to you coming again. Enclosed also the picture of Karen Dad took at bath time. The baby out there is a boy. I spoke to the manager at the garage. Bond left for home at four. Right. Good sharp tug, love. It won't break. Get on to welfare. Tell them to find a nursery. Check all the hospitals, local and regional, uh, plus all the baby clinics and the registrar of births. Oh, and Sergeant Willoughby, pull everybody in on this one, including all those on leave. And that includes you, Sergeant Madden. Sir? It's not unheard of, a mother rejecting her child. Yes, I was halfway to thinking that myself. Mrs. Carter. Mrs. Carter? My sister. Rains. Susan. Karen's auntie. Mr. Bond? I don't understand. How could anyone do such a thing? I didn't see her this morning. I usually get her up, feed her and that. It's a hard time. The only time we have together. This morning I was running late. You all, uh, you all live here? No, I live on Chambers Avenue. We're on a list, a housing list. Why? Why take a baby and replace it with another? It's no good looking for a logic. Whoever did it is obviously a weirdo. It's going to be a woman, perhaps someone who uh, wants to get rid of her child, but needs to have a child. I think we'd got that far. Your baby was wearing pink. Perhaps she wanted a little girl. Or perhaps her child was difficult, always screaming. And she thought she'd swap it for one uh, that wouldn't scream. Either way, a nut, like I say. Her own child was well cared for. She'd probably do the same for Karen. Assuming she's not married to some maniac child beater. You just have to do it, don't you? Has anybody shown any interest in the child? You know, in the street, uh, a neighbour, anything above average interest. People come up to you sometimes, ask how old she is. Small talk. Anyone with a baby themselves? I don't know. And you're certain you've never seen this other child before? There was someone last Saturday in the supermarket at the cash out. A woman, well, a girl. She had a pram. We was doing the weekend shop. She was behind us in the queue. Yes, she said something about hers always cried. And I said we got off light, and we never got a peep out of Karen. Can you uh, describe this woman? I barely looked at her twice. Brown hair. Ordinary, you know. How about the pram? Or the baby? You think it was her? Well, it's a possibility. Or, uh, as you say, might just be small talk. Have you seen the woman again? Near the house or in the park? While you were out with the baby? Women always gas on about babies. Whenever and wherever. It's the big event of their lives, isn't it? Do you have a child, Mrs. Rhymes? She's divorced. If that's relevant. The sister's got a chip. Oh, you noticed. Childless women get that way, don't they? You think it's a female prerogative? The desire to procreate? Well, you said it yourself. It's going to be a woman. She may be worth a visit. What, her own niece? Well, where did she get the baby for the swap? 
maybe that's part of it. She snatched him first and then did the swap to throw us off. Well, she hasn't thrown us off, has she? And all that venom. Well, it hardly made her inconspicuous. Besides, nobody else has reported a missing baby. Oh, it doesn't have to be local. Oh, there's no logic in it, Mike. Instinct isn't always your prerogative, you know. Not sure about the other thing, either. About the baby being well cared for. I mean, your typical baby snatcher loves babies, yearns for one. That's why she takes it. But if your theory is right, this one's already got a baby, and she dislikes him enough to hand him over to a stranger. If she doesn't care for her own baby, she's not going to care for a substitute, is she? Well, no, I... I got you people in to advise me on security, specifically for that purpose. Well, I'm afraid a professional can get around the most sophisticated systems. Now he tells me. Steel control. They immobilized the outside alarm and then cut off the electricity when they got in, which did for the inside one. Have you got an electric clock anywhere? As long as we can set the time of the robbery. Oh, yes, there's one on the cooker. Me last night sometime. We were in London overnight. Christmas do at my old firm. What was in the wrappings? Martha! Wife's department. What was in the wrapping paper? 2.42 a.m. The clock. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Our grandchildren's presents. They're coming to stay for Christmas. It's the very first time since my daughter was married, that is. So I wanted to make it very special. What were the presents? One of those compact things. A compact disc player, that was for Giles. And then there was a computer, I believe it plays games, that was for Mark. And then an electronic keyboard for Zoe. She's very musical, you see. All interest-free credit. Now it's too late to replace them. They come down tomorrow. Well, they're not coming for the presents, are they? They're coming to see us. But children expect presents at Christmas, don't they? It's what they remember you for, isn't it? Oh, I'm sure they remember you for other things as well. Not if they barely know you. Thought I heard the car. You forgot to wrap this. Not a present, it's Robin's. Your grandson. Sylvia and he arrived this afternoon just after we spoke. Isn't it lovely? Oh, dry. Oh. I thought they were busy this Christmas. She's changed her fans. Thing he come to? Neil's with his mother. His father's ill, apparently. Sylvia thought it'd be better if she and the baby came here. It's time you laid eyes on him. The baby. Oh, I look forward to it. Nothing from Sheila. No, oh, she's had to cancel. They're doing a special matinee over Christmas. It's for charity, apparently. I thought charity began at home. Oh, I'll take a note for me. I'm tired. Christmas. Oh, it's probably for the best anyway, now that Sylvia's come. Give you a chance to make up for lost time. Not that there's any making up to do. Did you eat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grabbed something. Oh. I'll go up then. We've gone a bit over the top, haven't we? <laughs> oh, it is Christmas. And how? This one from me to John. Skelectrics. Well, that's what we agreed. From both of us. There's another one there from you. It's just a token. Yours is the biggie. 
to make up for all the absences. Oh, come on, Jean. Well, the children notice them, even if you don't. Buying them off isn't going to change that. Whatever gives you that idea. That we should pray. Can't do any harm. You pray. You think it'll do any good? Amicable gentlemen. We intend to achieve that rare phenomenon, a divorce without tears. And since it's Christmas, we thought we should be together for Robert, the baby. And you got back at what time? Uh, oh, around three. The police were here already. That's the absolute worst nightmare, coming home to find the place crawling with police. Oh, love. It was uh, you who called the police? We have been through all this already. Different department, darling. The others were uniformed. I didn't think they were nightshirts. What was under the tree? Oh, things for the baby, mostly. A uh, computerized play center thing I sent off to the States for. A uh, musical box, which plays everything from Madonna to Mozart. Clothes. Construction kit I picked up in Denmark. Um, that's a miscellaneous assortment of soft toys. My wife never does things by halves. On the contrary, I'm getting rather good at it. Was there anything else? An electric train set. Dropped it off last week. It was under the tree, I take it. Well, where else? <laughs> you saw them as they went. Sort of saw them. Well, one of them. The light wasn't on. Well, I want you to pop down to the station. Have a look at a few pictures. Oh, what about the baby? I'm expected at the office. For heaven's sake, I'll stay with the baby. Oh, well, I'll phone in and say I'll be late. This is a first? Well, she can bring the baby. It's no problem. <laughs> Drink, gentlemen. No, I think that we've uh, had quite enough of the Christmas spirit. Your average pro hits several houses in one night and then clears off. This bloke hits only one and then sneaks around to do a repeat performance the night after. What does that tell us? They're in no hurry. Or perhaps the opposite, that they're in such a hurry that they can only do one job a night. So we're back to square four. What now, then? Well, for the want of anything better, let's follow your instinct. Something I put off as long as I can. Decorating, DIY, all that stuff. Oh, is that what you came to discuss? Only small talk, all part of the softening up routine.
certain it was my sister who sent you. Oh, I know all about their insinuations. Not that they actually say anything. Not out loud. You know, I, I wasn't even allowed to hold it. I once suggested they come here and live. I had the space. I wouldn't interfere. They couldn't even look at me. They were afraid. Afraid of what? Side facing, isn't it? The baby's nursery. So it gets the morning sun. You have no right to look in there. No one goes in there. Get him out of here. I want him out, out of my home. Out! Someone once said, kids bring out feelings you never knew you had. But feelings don't die, do they? Her uh, baby died two years ago. A boy. It was a cot death. She thinks everybody blames her. I suppose because she blames herself. Her husband took the easy way out the front door. I assume she was preparing it for a baby. No. Easy enough mistake to make. Yeah. That's what I told her. Come on. She's either thick or thorough. She's been at it an hour already. How about the registry? Going on for over 200 baby boys born locally in the last four months. Hello. Anything? No. Well, take it to him. Like I say, it was dark. It could have been any one of them. You uh, stopped on this page. If I... What happens next? If you make a positive identification. Well, we'll check the evidence. And if it's right, we bring charges. Do I appear in court? Is that a problem? I lied. When I got the job, they wanted references. I made them up. People don't trust you with their kids, not unless you're trained or you've got references. I needed the work. Well, you've proved yourself now. They won't think anything about it. I lied. Everybody will know it. Another lie and you'll be in deeper. This way, have you a chance to put it right? It was too dark. Sorry. Not good enough, Mandy. It was dark. I was frightened. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. Tony Jasper. Isn't he up north? Unless he decided to come home for Christmas. Play straight here. He's your original smash and grab merchant. Electronic security is hardly his usual MO. Unless he found a helpmate on the way. The nanny says there was more than one of them. I'll check him out. I seem to remember he's got a brother. 
try to lift her out of the pram, for God's sake. All right, all right. Let's just take it nice and slow. Name? What the hell's my name got to do with it? It's hers you want. We know her name. I kept thinking somewhere out there is my baby. Everywhere I looked, I thought, is it them? Have they got her? <laughs> We're doing everything we can, Miss Bond. You must believe that. I used to feel guilty. Because it seemed like my sister had all the bad luck. But it was there, waiting for me. All the time. <coughs> oh, did he wake you? Him. Well, why not, eh? Hey? Uh, uh. Mum says he looks like you. Uh, uh. Settling in all right? Of course. Used to be my home, remember? Here Sheila's getting her name in lights. Third billion in the pantomime. Not exactly mega star stuff. To start? Oh, she'll get there. No question. If he looks like anybody, I think he looks like you. <sighs> Poor thing. Now, why do you say that? What? Always putting yourself down. I didn't know I did. All the time. So what's it like being a grandfather then? <laughs> Terrific. I thought you'd get a buzz out of it. And grandparents can keep their distance, can't they? No one thinks twice about it. report you asked for. Oh, thank you. Came through this morning. Anything of note? Uh, he's too weight, no signs of bruising or abuse, and he's had all the shots. Perfectly normal, well cared for child. But somebody wanted to get rid of him? Or simply preferred the other baby? Yeah, but why should she? <laughs> We've nicknamed him Ginger. He's got a cry, this one, you wouldn't believe. You've caught him at a good moment. Always in the evening. Two or three hours, flat out, four decibels. <laughs> Back home, Layla. Yes. But it's only with you, I gather. Uh, Ian, his brother, come down for Christmas. Well, his brother's out now, is he? Last month. Did you want him for summon? We need to know where he was uh, on Monday. Well, they both were. Come to that. Here. They had some mates over to play cards. Uh, the night before that. Same thing. Playing cards. Babysitting. I work evenings. 
down at the Andromeda Club. Temporary, you know. Why Tony come down? To babysit while I'm at work. I didn't know that you had a baby, Layla. He's sleeping. Come and see for yourself. I got the idea that you and Tony weren't together anymore. He needs me. He proved that by wanting to be with us for Christmas. The baby's his then? There's never been anyone else. I've never wanted anyone else. I said, didn't I? Ten to one, we'll get a visit. First sign of any trouble, it'll be down to us. Say it's a social call. An exchange of seasonal greetings. Oh, bloody heart. I hear you've been doing a spot babysitting. News travels. Takes two of you, does it, to look after one baby? I hold the nappies. He folds them. <laughs> Your wife said you had mates round to play cards. Ted Jackson and Gavin Fletcher. You want their addresses? We know their addresses. Oh, good shot. And you never left the flat all evening? Leave me own kid. Some bloody father that will make me. I'm glad you're taking your responsibility so seriously. Whatever you might think of me, Wexford. My kid's a different bag. OK. Tell me, boy. Statement of fact. All right. Let me try another on you. Two burglaries on consecutive nights. We have an eyewitness and an M.O. identical to the job that your brother pulled in Leeds before he was sent down. The dual alarm system was your speciality, wouldn't it be? I'll be fair. That was before he took his open university course. Which was before or after you took one in child rearing. I can see where you're coming from on this, guys, honest. Just happened to be way off beam, that's all. Tell me why. It's Layla's record sheet you should have pulled. Oh? Whatever she told you, I'm here for the kid, right? I don't want a repetition of last time. No bloody way. He means Jack. My eldest. So the baby we saw was your second child? <sighs> Who bloody ray? Where's the other one? We had him adopted. She fractured his skull. She was shut up in the flat with him 24 hours a day, you know, he's. She said she couldn't stop him crying. It happens, right? So they put a care order on him. And what could I do? She's a good girl, Layla, the best. Just can't cut it with kids, that's all. But you still went ahead and had another. So what was I to do? Chop it off? Of course, I was worried about it. Worried sick. Who wouldn't be? I said so. Told her so. I had to. Next thing, directly he was born, she'd done a runner with him back here. Who knows? If I stick around, it may still work out. You've got to try, haven't you? Seems Jasper had it about right, sir. July 1986, Crown versus Layla Jasper, blah, blah, blah. Social report. Bruising believed to have occurred over several months. Fracture to the skull, result of a single blow. Compatible with the baby's head being dashed against the wall. Suspended sentence. Recommendation for psychiatric treatment. Care order on the child. Finished? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, sir. Regular and sustained beatings to the body and head. Layla Jasper. I always thought she was frightened of her own shadow, that one, sir. I think we'd better keep an eye on our second child. Is that a passing thought or a suggestion? Well, a, a bit of both, sir. Well, let's see to it, then. Right you are, sir. It's a lovely age, isn't it? I won't regret the minor grown up, actually. <sighs> normal pregnancy, normal delivery. 
I attended her myself. Everything went like clockwork until I told her it was a boy. She hit the roof, went berserk, said she wanted a girl. Said she wouldn't take it home, wouldn't feed it. Absolute pandemonium. And her name was Freeman? Yes. My husband just sat there. He didn't know what had hit him. Got the psychiatrist up to her. Now, this was, um, when? I told your sergeant or whoever it was who called. Four months ago, give or take. Something. Take it easy, Mike. Timothy, take Governor Underback and stop pestering him. How can I help you? Just a couple of questions, Mrs. Freeman. Shouldn't take long. Questions about what? You had your last child at King's Markham Maternity Home. Yes. About four months ago? Four months, three days. Why? I understand you were quite distressed after the birth. Very distressed that the baby was a boy. What on earth has that got to do with you? To do with anyone? Two days ago, a baby girl was stolen from her pram in Kings Markham High Street. A baby boy, aged around four months, was left in her place. What has that got to do with me? Those all your children. Yes? Or boys. I think I'd better telephone my husband. Where's your baby now, Mrs. Freeman? Rather than disturb your husband, it might just be simpler if you showed us the sex of your baby. Don't you think? You have no right to ask me that. A child is missing. That gives me the right. Can he do this? He already has. sorts of complex feelings. Feelings you're not too proud of later on, that you'd rather forget. But then what would someone like you know about feelings? Ironic, isn't it? It's your damn theory in the first place. One of my theories? Yes, all right, but the most plausible one. Still only a theory. So, I took a leaf out of your book and followed my nose. You humiliated her, Mike. You went in like a bull at a gate. You don't have to prove anything to me, Mike. We just work in different ways. I accept that. Oh, sure you do. You think I'm a plodder, right? Good old Mike. Slow and steady, but he gets there in the end. Well, it's because of plodders like me that someone like you can take your leaps in the dark because we provide the safety net. Have I ever said otherwise? You saw what happened today. She wasn't the only one humiliated. Not because you broke the rules. But how you broke them. No, that's irrelevant. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Would you like a paper? Well, they say a combination of opposites, it's the best team. As long as there's mutual respect. You can respect a man's opinion without agreeing with it. And do you? Yeah. You don't sound very sure. I'm not sure of myself. The difference is that I can admit it. Right.
see you back at the shop. I'll see to his nappy when I, I get back. I thought you had to be there by eight. I'll start charging. Joke. <laughs> Do you know why she brought the baby here this Christmas? Because Neil's father's ill. To prove to you she'd achieved something. Nonsense. When have I ever said that she couldn't achieve anything? Many moons ago, you gave a tale of two cities to Sheila for Christmas. You gave Sylvia Heidi grows up. If I can remember that, so can she. <laughs> I'm not listening to this. I am just saying that things like that can go deeper than you think. Maybe you both think too much. supposed to be about giving, in case you've forgotten that. Dad, all that went out when the cavemen came in. Besides, we've given you a present. And we got you one last year. The second-hand tie you got your mother to buy me from the Oxfam shop. Mum buys all your presents for us. You're asking to get your bottom smacked hard. Go on, then. Call Inspector Wexford, will you? Tell him I'll meet him there. Just in case you get any ideas. Can't do that, Dad. It's Christmas. Watch me. Sorry to disturb you. Still want a car, does it? Wild horses wouldn't stop me. You're a spelling genius, Pete. How many R's in harassment? One. 
to in warrant. So you've had a bit of luck, Pete? Skill, not that. Well, I never doubted your skill. You want in Wexford? I'm happy to sit one out. Now, my skill lies in other areas. You did say it was two hours in warrant. We've had another break in tonight. No. Yeah. Afraid so. Christmas and all. Yeah. Still. One more shopping day. And it's two hours in a rest. Hello, Layla. What is it? Has something happened? No. Just taking out a few things. You've been here all evening? Yeah. From what time? Eight. And you left turning the others babysitting? Yeah. You didn't tell us later. About your first child. Not your business. If it puts your new baby at risk, it is. He's not at risk. He's not at risk. Half of it wrapped up at any rate. Matron at the nursery's been on a blower. Excuse me, Sarge. That other baby. Apparently, the mother's made contact. Uh, she asked first if we had the baby who had been swapped in Kings Markham High Street. I said, who is this speaking? And she said, never mind that. Did we have the baby or not? What kind of voice was it? Young? Youngish, yeah. She sounded rattled, you know, anxious. I said, yes, we had the baby. And then she said... No, then she asked if he was all right. I said, fine, that he was being well looked after. I asked her again, was she the mother? She didn't answer. She just said, if he cries, sing to him. She said, there's this one song, always sends him to sleep. She said she didn't know its name, so she hummed it. Da da da, da da da, da da da, da da da. It's Brahms' lullaby. My kids had a wind up musical box of it when they were babies. Used to drive us crazy. <laughs> Anything else? I tried to tell her the baby needed his mother. I said if she was the mother to come in and see him, I'd say she was sympathetically treated, all that. She hung up. Half an hour later, he went into one of his blue rages. 
I sang him the song. Within seconds, he was asleep in my arms, good as gold. Who else would know a thing like that, except a mother? Bite wouldn't go amiss. Yeah, all right. Eggs or what? The works. I'm famished. Second thoughts. Maybe later. He's uh, he's due for a feed, isn't he? We don't want any interruptions, do we? Everything's all right, isn't it, Tony? Wexford was round last night at work. He's drawn a blank, so he's covering old ground. Forget it. New start, right? I said it and I meant it. And the rest. We help each other out. Why not? If she wants to pop the shops, I'll listen out to Matthew. Matthew? A baby. Just the same for me. You're close, are you? It's our old man, isn't it? All these questions. It's him, right? Is that what Layla told you? Layla! You know, before he moved in, she used to talk about him endlessly. Tony this, Tony that. But not like he was a saint, but like she's... Like she's what? Grateful to him. What for? Loving her. Do something for me, will you? If he goes out tonight, give me a call. Well, I'll leave it to you. We ought to see what we can do about putting a watch on Tony Jasper tonight. Salify's absolutely watertight. Yeah, isn't it, though? La, 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 Good King Winston's last look down on the face of Stephen.
Mum's next door on the sherry and mince pies circuit. Oh. Hello. Here's my favourite pie. Hmm? What have you been doing? Oh, wrapping presents, the usual. You? Unwrapping burglaries. <laughs> Trying to. Oh, how about the baby swap case? Mum told me about it. Well, the little girl baby was found in the abbey. She's back with her mother. He's in the council nursery. Tell me, this maternal instinct, something to it? I mean, does it exist? Oh, yes. Well, in a way, not in a soppy, sentimental way. Uh, it's more a protective thing. A lengths you know you'd go to to protect your child. Yes. Yes, that's what I thought. And the paternal thing? Or is that more an acquired skill? Well, the person who's usually closest to a child is the mother. The father often stays on the outside because he doesn't want to intrude, particularly with a daughter. It's not as complicated as you think, you know. Like a lot of families, we divided into two halves. Me and Sheila. And you chose your mother. Only because you and Sheila were so exclusive. Oh. Both got it wrong then, didn't we? There's no blueprint for it, you know. Uh. You just do the best you can. I hope that it's good enough. Whatever you do, your children will undoubtedly tell you that it isn't. There goes the family breadwinner. Detective Sergeant Martin. Yes, WPC Maynard. To tell you the truth, I'm hoping to join your lot. CID, all that. Not now. Later, you know. Is that right? Lots of women do it, don't they? So rumour has it. And I was told that cadet school had a real aptitude for detective work. You know, one of the instructors actually told me that. Fancy. So I was wondering, next time something else comes up you need a hand with, will you know where I am? See if there's a way out the back. Mr. Trick there, Mike. 
Still my love game, man. All yours. Just give me two minutes, will you? Can I come in? Dear God, Layla. Who you tried to protect? Him? Or the baby? It wasn't you, was it? Who hit your first child? Won't end with Christmas, Layla. Come the new year, you'll be gone, like always. When he thinks you'll be useful again, he'll be back with his sweet talk and his promises. And he'll take him back, like always. What is there in it for you, Layla? What do you get in return? I got Matthew. I got a baby. Well, let's keep him this time, shall we? For the benefit of the neighbours, I imagine. Show me your baby, Layla.
do jobs for Mum. After Dad took off. Mend the car. Fix the roof and that. Afterwards, he'd stay for a meal. He'd fill the house. Just by being there. She wanted him. We all knew that, all of us kids. <laughs> he chose me. I knew what he was. Everyone did. He said getting married would change him. I didn't want him to change. I was afraid his feelings for me might change too. Then we had the baby. The first one. Tony didn't want me to change. The baby would cry. And I'd go to it. Made him angry. He used to say I liked it to cry so I could comfort it. He did things to make it cry. Bad things. But then he'd lock the door so I couldn't get to it. That was my punishment. I had to say it was me. <laughs> they do things to you in prison if you are a kid. Tony told me. When Matthew was born, he cried. They say a baby crying is the most beautiful sound a mother can hear. Not for me. I ran. He came after me, said he needed me. And the baby. I believed him. Like he knew I would. But when I left for work, I got scared about leaving Matthew alone with him. He's a crier too, you see. So you did a trading with one that isn't? What made you change your mind? What made you put the other baby in the church? Something you said at the club. About the baby being at risk. I suddenly thought, suppose she did cry. Suppose she woke and cried and... Now. One day. Not for a very long time, Layla. Tony uh, will come back. I know. The hardest thing to teach a kid is to say no. Maybe we can learn to say it together. Hello? Laura? Right. What's the dose? 